Hey, hey everybody, I hope you're doing well today. My name is Brad Cartwright and the following video is a free preview from bradcartwright.com, a website designed for Ivy economic students all around the world so that you know you will have all of the information you need to feel empowered for a unit test, a semester exam, or ultimately the IB exam at the end of your two year journey. So take a look at the website when you get a chance and in the meantime, enjoy this free preview. All right, now let's take a deeper look at behavioral economics and understanding what it is. And so this video is going to be kind of short. Just take a look at, like, the, think of this as an introduction video to behavioral economics. All right, so here we go. Okay, what is it? Remember that behavioral economics is where economics meets psychology, where economics meets psychology. Super important for you to remember, okay? And this idea of economics is going to challenge the assumptions that we as humans act in an economically rational manner when given choices in the marketplace, okay? So what does that mean? Well, it's the branch of economics that, quote, incorporates the insights of psychology and recognizes that the choices consumers make are governed by many factors that are not consistent with the assumptions behind the neoclassical models. And this was pioneered by Richard Taylor, who won the Nobel Prize in 2017. Okay, so we remember this. Remember this from the introductory to economics unit. Behavioral economics challenges these underlying assumptions by saying that we are human beings, not these economic agents that just make information or make decisions in an economic concept based on our own um, self-interest and also this notion of, of, of um, utility or maximizing our own happiness, okay? So what does that mean? Well, let's take a look at what Richard Taylor said. He argued that rational choice humans don't even exist. And I kind of love that, right? We are homo sapiens, not homo economicus. And he reduced it down to these two terms. And I really, really like this idea. And it's super helpful in trying to understand economics to like make things really simple, right? He created these things called econs, which are the neoclassical, like homo economicus people, non-existent creatures. And then of course, us as humans, okay? So if I zoom in on this chart, what he said was that on the left-hand side here, econs, which he says are non-existent, right? They operate this way. And what he said is humans, which is what he believes all of us are, behave this way, okay? And then we're gonna take a look at these individually. So what did he say about the econs? Or what's said about econs, these neoclassical homo economicus beings that behavioral economists challenge and say don't even exist. They are rational. They have perfect information always. They are extremely intelligent and able to perform complex calculations very quickly. They seek to maximize only their own utility. They make decisions based on their own self-interest. They have consistent preferences over time, have no self-control problems, and are unbiased. <laughs> That's how Taylor looks at all of <laughs> the econs, as he calls them, these, these homo economicus people who behave like that. And he's like, that is just not the case, right? And I just got to say, I'm taking this chart from um, Ian Dorton and Jocelyn Blink's excellent course companion uh, that was just came out, the third edition, the 2020 edition. Um, and I love this chart. So thank you, Jocelyn. Thank you, Ian, for putting together this chart. Okay. So what the behavioral economists believe, and this this hand column, this right hand column, is the way in which we need to think as we look at economic concepts through the lens of somebody who is a behavioral, econo uh, behavioral economist, okay? So Tyler said that humans, which is all of us, we, are, we have something called bounded rationality, which we're going to talk about in a second, so don't worry about exactly what that means. We have incomplete information, not perfect information. We are not as intelligent as econs. <laughs> <laughs> we have limited ability to carry out complex calculations. We are social beings and make decisions in a social context, not these, you know, robots that just make decisions based on ourselves. Um, 
we change our tastes over times. And yes, indeed, we do have, wait for it, wait for it, self-control problems, self-control issues. And what he basically is saying is like, let's look at the whole creature. Let's look at these human beings as they function in reality. And we don't behave differently in an economic standpoint than we would in any other situation, right? Sometimes we make decisions that are poor, right? Like maybe we're going through the grocery store line and maybe we're an exceptionally healthy eater, but man, they're just a pack of M&Ms sitting there and you just think, ah, and you grab the M&Ms, right? And maybe before you're through the checkout line, you're halfway through the bag. Well, that's not necessarily operating with all of the information. That's not necessarily like having no self-control problems. No, you don't like m and I mean, maybe you like M&Ms, but you, you don't have economic, you don't have M&Ms as your regular diet. But in that one moment, oof, you just lack the self-control <laughs> to restrain yourself from buying them. And you bought them, which of course is why they put them in the checkout line at the grocery store. Okay. So that's a look at the overall, you know, feel for behavioral economics so that we understand what it is that is the construct or better said, like the assumptions. That's better, important. Remember, this right-hand column, the humans right here, this column right here is, are the assumptions that we are going to use when moving forward with understanding human behavior from a behavioral economist's point of view, my friends.